Hi everybody. I haven't shared many videos lately and um, mainly because I don't get many views on YouTube anymore. I'm not uh, creating I guess what's popular but I'm going to share this. This, this is going to be a resin bowl and it's going to be in the 4th of July spirit. So I've got a 13 inch silicone mold under this paper towel. I'll show you in a second. I got it on Amazon. Two of these little geode shaped coasters which you can find on Amazon. All the links will be below the video. I'm going to use, instead of alcohol inks today, I'm going to use Bombay ink and this is um, it's India ink and it, it's turquoise instead of blue and crimson instead of red so we'll just kind of see. I'll kind of maybe tweak things. I have some micas, sparkle white. All these are from Etsy Fun Shine Color Shop. Truly red, which is not metallic or sparkly. It's just a straight on red mica. And then Moonlight Shadow, which is a shimmering deep blue. So I've put some micas in the cup and I added sparkle white to the red so that there would be some sparkle in that. And then I'm just going to put a hint of the Bombay ink because I do want it a little transparent and the micas may take away all the transparency. I love using micas but recently all of my bowls have been used with alcohol inks and the, the, the con on that one, pros and cons, alcohol inks are known to fade over time in the sunlight. Supposedly jacquard and all it's gotten better and they're not as bad but I thought I'll switch it up today and use Bombay ink and just try a different type of pigment that's not known to fade as quickly. As, uh, as always, my go-to is the Artist Resin by Counterculture DIY Medium Viscosity. It's the yellow-green label. Always be first. So I'm going to... This is a 9-ounce cup and I've marked it approximately where I think it's about 8 ounces because I want about 16 ounces tops so I'm going right up to my mark and you want the equal amounts of B and A if you go a little overboard with one or the other you may have the, um, the possibility of it not totally curing on you so in my mixing cup here, I'm going to go ahead and pour this in. And I've got the ounces on the side of the cup, and actually that's not eight ounces. So I'm going to, since I do have it on the cup, I wasn't even thinking about that on the mixing cup. I'm going to See if I can get all this out of there. And I might end up having 8 ounces when it's all said and done. It didn't quite look like it, but it's almost there. I just need to add a little bit more. Okay, I just kind of dribbled it in until I got it to 8 ounces. You always want to put B in first because it is thinner and it just mixes easier when you put the thin in first and then the thick. This is more like corn syrup, a part, the A part is. So now I'm going to just take it on up to the 16 ounce mark. I've got my timer here on my phone. I'm going to start it at 6 minutes. Always have gloves on. Put on uh, your eyewear or glasses. And put your mask on. Especially while you're mixing. And uh, I'm going to then have it off while I'm doing the process for you. Okay. That's six minutes. Now I'm going to move it to stopwatch and hit start and we're going to time how long this takes to get to a certain point where we want to put the certain pieces of the colors of resin into the other resin. So 
so timing is important on this. Of course, I have a baby wipes, 91% alcohol for cleanup and spraying for bubbles. I have paper towels to wipe my sticks and just things like that. So right now we're not in any rush because we, we want to really have a time frame of about 25 minutes. So um, I'm going to leave the timer running over to the side and I will keep you posted on what time it is at different steps of the process. So here lately I've been using alcohol inks and you drop it onto the surface, you add your white in at a certain timing and it gives that beautiful petal starburst effect. And um, so this is a little bit different from the other effect. That is really my favorite effect of all, you know, all time probably as far as for resin or bowls, for resin bowls or trays. But I wanted to really uh, make a definite line of red, white, and blue. And with alcohol inks, they can bleed into each other. So the white can bleed into either color and make it a little pastel, or the purple, I mean the blue and the red can blend in a bit and it can almost get to a little purple stage. And so I didn't want to do that. And I, you know, I did a a bowl. I'm not even going to probably share the technique because to me it's a fail. And here's the reason why I'm sh saying that is I have a definite line of blue ink, a definite area of white ink, and then the red. And I don't like that at all. Um, but I was trying to do this in a kind of fireworks effect and that didn't work either um, so you know it's cute but it's definitely a fail in my book so that's why I wanted to like designate areas of color and the way to do that is to make it <clears throat> to wait until the 25 minute mark at least to put it into your resin and take it from there so I've got 16 ounces of resin. Two will go in each of these, which will be four ounces. That leaves 12 for the tray. And so I'm probably going to put about six of clear and about one of clear into these. So that's eight ounces that would be clear, and that leaves eight ounces to color. And I'm trying to figure out if I did three, three, and or two, two, and three, or two, two, and three and a half, or two and a half and three. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out. You know, this is something you got to kind of figure out before you do this process. And so that's I'm kind of thinking it through as I talk to you. So anyway, let's just go ahead. Let's. This is just mica, so it's okay that it knocked over. I think I'm going to put right now maybe about two and a half. And really, there'll be one, there'll be more of one color than the other because of the outside ring. It'll require more than the other color. So I'll probably. I'm just going to pour about that much in both of them and I'm going to, this is a five ounce cup, so I'm going to make it about halfway or so for the white. So the rest will go into the molds and before I mix those I'm going to go ahead and pour in just to make sure I have enough of the clear to go in all of my molds before I do anything about mixing. So I'm going to wipe it. And you don't want any moisture in your mold at all. So after wiping it, I'm going to take some alcohol and 
and just make sure I've got that clean. I just want to make sure that's totally cleaned out and not wet at all. But before I pour, I've got some little crystals that are four millimeters. I got blue, red, and a little bit of the clear. Um, I ordered them on Amazon and the clear, they just gave me a little tiny bit. <laughs> Don't ask me why, I thought I was getting the same amount as the other two. They're all different sizes. So, this is where it pays to have a, a jerky hand, like not, not a steady hand. I don't have one. And this is where it's a good thing, <laughs> I would say. I wanted some kind of a little bit of a crystally, sparkly border of some sort. Okay, so in the white, I'm going to put at least 12 drops of the Cast and Craft. So, uh, let's add a little of this back into the white. Got a little bit of mica in there. I think hopefully it won't turn it pink. <laughs> a little bit of this. We want more white than the blue or the red. <clears throat> and since this is a five ounce cup, it almost kind of looks to me like about three ounces. So I'm trying to get a little bit more of it. The main thing is I want there to be at least a coat of resin on the bottom. It doesn't have to be thick, but I do want a coat of it. And also I'm just kind of scooting my crystals around. I'm going to put a few drops of the white alcohol ink. I just like to add white alcohol ink to my white mixture. I'm not putting a lot, just about five or six drops. So the little crystal ones that are clear almost kind of go away after they're in the resin, and that's kind of okay too. Um, I think they'll show up. Again, this is just the Blue Mica Moonlight Shadow, which is a beautiful, beautiful blue. So I can already tell I don't need the Bombay ink in it. But I might put a few drops of alcohol ink. But right now it's actually quite pretty. I think I will add a little bit more mica. So the total amount of mica that I put into this cup is probably about the size of this little spoon, which is like the size of my middle finger maybe. So, I don't know what size that is, but just a, here's an hors d'oeuvre spoon, so you see the difference in the sizes, okay? And it's starting to warm up. I can feel it starting to warm, and that's what we're looking for, that we're wanting it to be a little bit further along, because the warmer it is, the less it will move on you. And we're really wanting it to kind of stay in place. Okay, so that 
I'm going to put a couple of alcohol ink drops. One, two, three. Ultramarine Blue by Bray Reese, which is a beautiful, vibrant ultramarine. So that's very nice and pigmented. And it's got that beautiful mica shimmer. If you can see that. I can see through it just barely, but I really, I don't want to see through it a whole lot. I, I really want it to like take the show, be the star of the show. Okay, here's the Truly Red Mica. It's a, it's a little bit different beast. It is um, straight red. There's no metallic to it at all, so it has a different look. So I put a little of the Sparkle White in it to help it um, kind of be a little bit sparkly. Now this one is warmer than the blue, which is interesting. And I do want some more. It's very powdery, so it takes a lot of stirring to get it to the point you're looking for it to be nice and smooth with no chunks. So I'm not stirring it over my clear. I don't want to accidentally have some mica blow in there until it's fully immersed. So I'm also going to push against the side of the cup against where my thumb is just to help it kind of break apart because sometimes it will stay a little bit chunky. And I'm going to put, um, I have some red braeries. I'm going to put one, two, three drops of that. We're at almost 24 minutes. So we are getting there. I'm going to do my tray first because that's the main event. That's the, the one piece that I need it to definitely do its thing. And if I have don't have enough resin or whatever, these may just end up being clear. The white is not as warm. It is warm, but it's not as warm as the colors. And we want it at, at least 25 minutes, if not a little bit longer, just so that it, we're sure that it's not going to move a lot. And I'm going to turn this flame down just to get around the edges. You don't want to heat near the edge of your mold too much and um, have your resin stick to the edge of your mold. Here's my crystals. They came in little plastic boxes from Amazon. And I'm going to take my um, cup and turn it over on my silicone mat, my fabulous counterculture silicone mat. I'm going to take my stick, wipe it all the way off, let it cure. Pull this a little bit towards me before I do anything with it because I'm going to have to put a cover over all of this. So 26 minutes, so we're pretty much about ready to do this thing. I'm just trying to get rid of a few little bubbles. This is a 13, at least a 13 inch mold. It may be even a little bit bigger. So my white is going to go between the colors of each layer. I'm going to give it some space, and then I'm going to do red. Back to blue. Red. I've still got plenty, so that's good, I guess. Let's go ahead and do the white. This is a really full cup, so...
I think I'm gonna do one on the outside. Okay, I've got a little bit more red than blue, so I think on the coasters, I'm going to start with red on the outside. And now I'm going to take my skewer. We'll go ahead and just do the coasters first. They're a little bit deeper. The more shallow it is, I really feel like the less movement you're going to get. I'm going to really take it in multiple times and I'm just dragging the surface, I'm not dragging the bottom of the mold. Kind of lifting up as I get near that red in the middle. it gets really thin in that area as far as the width of the stripes. It's at 40 minutes right now so you can tell by the way that the resin is moving it's starting to really get thick. So I'm almost out of time to move it. I'm not even going to circle in the middle. There's not enough time. We'll get to choose as well which side we want to use for the bowl. Okay, let's drag in again. And these, because they're thicker, they haven't set up as much because there's more resin to actually be working with here. So it's still very fluid. And that is why you want to wait till at least 25 minutes to start um, putting it, pouring it into the clear resin. Otherwise it's going to disperse and kind of intermingle in and you won't have definite lines or edges. I was going to do points, but I'm not. I really kind of like it the way it is. Got a couple little beads sticking out, but that's okay. So I think we're done. I'm gonna heat one more time. And so, because I know yeah, because I've used this resin over and over again and the viscosity and everything. It's going to be at five hours that I can touch it and shape it and everything. So I'm going to, um, because it's 12 ounces and this mold that probably holds 32 ounces. But you're, you're really going for the thickness. Um, 12 ounces is about perfect for a 13 inch. You want around the same amount of inches or a ton a little bit less. So if it's 13 inch mold, you want 13 or less ounces of resin for a bowl. And that way it'll be about a quarter to an eighth of an inch thick and that'll be the perfect thickness for making a bowl. The coasters, on the other hand, are full and those are two ounces of resin in each one and they're, you know, a quarter to uh, probably 
up to a half inch but not they're not a half inch thick I know that they're probably more of a quarter inch or so thick themselves so now it's just a waiting game for four or five hours and right now my clock is at 44 minutes so I'll just keep this going and I'll check it throughout the day and then I'll come back to form the bowl in five hours okay it's been five and a half hours. I've kind of lost track of time. It's still flexible. I should have um, been here 30 minutes earlier, but it will still bend, so that's a good thing. I'm going to go ahead and just do the coasters first. Just to see what they look like. Not so fabulous. I'm going to have to paint something on top of these. I don't know. I put, I put it on something flat that's protected so that it doesn't pick up anything off my table. What have you. So I have this wonky thing that I got at the dollar store that's totally plastic and shiny. And I put a foam plate that's just taped just so it gives a softer edge so that hard edge does not make a big ring in the middle of your bowl and it doesn't matter that it's kind of wonky the main thing is that your, your bowl just goes over this rounded edge and then I bought these you just have to be creative with what you're using to make your shapes these are the bottom half of some things I got on Amazon that hold Easter egg candy so the top part was supposed to look like the top of a carrot and I use these as my shapes. I've got six of them that go under the bowl to make it kind of wave in and out. So let me just show you really quick. Get this out of the mold. And if it's at all slightly tacky, you would wear gloves. Like I can see my thumbprint just a little bit where I touched it, but this part looks pretty good. I mean, that looks good too. And it, it's a little off center, so what I'll do is I'll take advantage of the shape and make it a little wonky to match the shift. <laughs> but I love the way my blue, that beautiful shimmering blue is. So I have to decide if I like that better or this better to be face up. I almost like this side better because it almost looks more like a firework. But so does that. Oh my goodness. I think I, I like this one better because you see more lines. So that's going to be the inside of my bowl. So what I'm going to do is place it over the bowl shape. And take advantage of it being a little wonky. And because I did let it sit a little longer than five hours, I'm going to heat it with my heat gun. This just helps it relax a little bit. And then I'm also going to get six pieces of tape. And I'll use those to help keep the, the uh, resin against the plastic just very, very loosely. Usually it doesn't move, but just in case. So when you heat it, it kind of relaxes it, and then you can kind of fold it and mold it kind of in and out. So I'll just kind of do it where it naturally is. So I'm just sticking the, the smaller end at the what would be more of the bottom part of the bowl and the bigger end at the top part so it fans out. And I give it a little bit of space. Put another one in. A little bit of space. Don't force your resin 
If it doesn't want to bend, you know, heat it a little bit more, but don't ever force it because it will cause it to crack if you've let it sit up a little bit longer than you'd planned. Okay. And if it's still a bit tacky, which it is, it'll kind of stick to that shiny plastic and it's not really going to move. So, like, I can leave it just like this, but it may rise a bit as it relaxes or cools down and, you know, cures. So what I do is I take the tape and I just put a little bit, maybe a half inch or so, on the resin. Not much. And then just tape it down to the plastic form. This is my most festive looking one for sure. So it's going to look like that, minus the ball and the orange parts when I take it out. So it's a little taller on one side on the, and a little shorter. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm taking advantage of that center that's a little off whack. And so it's going to have a higher side and a lower side. And I like, I like it actually being wonky. So that's a good thing. Now these, yeah, I think, I think between, I don't like the center of this. I might could paint something in the center, just right here, or add a star or something, and top coat these and they'll be okay. I just don't like. I like the petals and the blue and the white, but I don't like that center part. So I gotta figure out something that I can do for that part. I could even put a top coat in and just put some little crystal beads in the middle and that might resolve my issue right there. So that's probably what I'll end up doing if I top coat them, but I'm gonna let these cure till they're hard first for 24 hours. And then I'll flood coat it with fast set, which sets up really fast. So I'll be back. Okay, off camera, after I turned off the camera, I went ahead and took these little crystal beads that I used for the, the border of this. And I went ahead and centers for these just to give it something different. And I've got to build this resin up so I'm probably going to have to tape off around the edge and make a dam of some sort to totally get this under resin because you can see it stands up and the molds they go in you can't put a coaster back into a mold the resin will seep under it and make the back the bottom side yucky looking and so I'll work on those more. So let's just get this off and see what it looks like. And you just have to kind of pop this off and little foam piece stuck to it. I'm going to have to put a little layer of resin in there to make that look prettier. <clears throat> I'll do that when I coat my coasters again. And then these just kind of pop off. Because they're shiny, they don't leave an impression. They, you know, they may leave a tiny little impression here or there on the edge or something but you really cannot see it at all. So that forms that the wavy effect and I like it wonky and so like I said if you can see from the side it's higher on one side lower on one side and I actually really like that. So the, uh, the middle is nothing super fancy. I could put a little something in the middle here if I wanted to before I put my resin in the bottom just to pretty up the bottom a little bit and I may do that. 
So I'll be back to show you.